Hi everyone, I'm going to show you the worm crop gizzard dissection that you'll be using in the neuromuscular transmission lab today. To start, you want to take a worm and put it into 15% ethanol to anesthetize it. This can take anywhere from two to five minutes and you'll notice the worm is moving quite a bit in the beginning. As soon as you see it starting to slow down its movements and it's not moving as much, that's when you should take the worm out. If you leave it in too long, it can inhibit the muscular contractions in your prep later. So the worm isn't moving as much now, so we can take it out and put it in the dissecting tray. So just carefully fish it out, and put it in your pan, and put this away. And so what you want to do is pin the worm to the dissecting pan with the darker dorsal side up. So this is the darker dorsal side, and if you flip them over, this is the lighter ventral side. So this is the side that should be against the pan. So I'm going to put them dorsal side up, and you want to take a couple of pins, and one in his head area, the anterior part, and one down below and you can just stretch them out. And I have my beaker of worm ringer, and you can pour some on him just to keep him moist. Once you have it, the worm pinned to the pan, it's time to start the dissection. So the area you're looking for is right about here, but we're gonna start a little bit further down. And what I like to do is I like to make a little cross cut And then from there, we can start cutting upwards. What you want to do is try and pull the scissors, the scissor points up and pull the body wall away. And you want to try and keep the tip of the scissors up as much as you can, because if it points down too much, uh, you risk puncturing the prep that you, the cropping gizzard. So just go steady, but slow. Okay, once you've got to that point, you want to pin the sides open so that you can see what you're doing. So take some of the pins and just pin open the sides. And you want to be careful when you're pinning that you don't puncture the prep that you want. And you can also pour some ringer solution on it just to keep everything moist. Okay, so the part that you want to look, you're looking for is this is the crop area and this is the gizzard just below it. So taking your glass hook, start down where the intestine is and you want to carefully loosen it from the body wall. There are these membranes that hold everything in place and you want to just loosen it. And just do this carefully on both sides. Again, be careful that you don't puncture the prep that you, you're looking for. So try not to puncture the intestine, if you can help it, and the cropping gizzard. The reason you don't want to puncture it is because you want it to retain its contents because the muscular contractions that you want to look at later need something to work against. So what I like to do is I try to get, oops, this pin came out. So if your pin comes out or if it tears away, that's okay. No, no need to panic. You can just pin it back in place. So then what I like to do is to get 
I try to get the glass rod or the glass hook underneath the intestine and I like to free up the bottom part of the intestine. Okay, and now I'm going to just move this pin out of the way because it's right where I want to do past my thread. So once you've got part of the, the intestine cleared away from the body wall, you want to tie the lower part. So get a couple of pieces of thread, and here I've got my thread. And it's easier if you get the thread wet in the ring, worm wringer. So I'm just trying to get it wet here. And then what you want to do is, and you've got to be careful with this part, it's carefully take your forceps, and I like to close the forceps and then just carefully slide it underneath, carefully open, and grab the thread and just pull it through. It's a bit tricky, but if you can get the get that part done, it makes the rest of it much easier. So I'm just gonna put this, oops, the bottom part came away. I'm just gonna repin. And so I'm just gonna move these pins out of the way. And now what you want to do is tie off this bottom section. So you can just tie a little double knot. It's a bit fiddly. And you want to tie this knot just below where the gizzard is. And you want to tie it snugly so that it doesn't come off later, but you don't want to pull it too tight and cut through the intestine because if you do, then you'll have to start all over. So we'll tie a double knot. So that's good. I'll take a pair of scissors, I'll just trim off the short end. And so now we've got the bottom tied and we've got this piece of thread. So now you wanna take your glass rod again, your glass hook, and just clean off bottom part here of your intestine just to loosen it away and now you want to cut the bottom part free so what you want to do is cut it a good distance away from where you tied your string or your thread so I would like to cut it like right about here and it gives me a good amount before the actual knot in the thread to hold the um, so that the thread can hold your prep and it won't slip off if you cut it up here too close to the knot, you risk that your prep will fall off the thread later when, when it starts to contract. And that's, you don't want that. So now, this, is, this makes it a bit easier. Now that you've cut it, you can use your hook and you can use the thread to gently pull the prep up and away from the body wall. And you can just clear the membranes that are holding everything in place. Again, be careful that you don't puncture your prep. So you can see I'm just scraping at the body wall and the membranes, and I'm gently pulling upwards as I go. So what you want to do here is just go far enough. So there's the, there's the prep that you want. And we're just going to keep going. So what you want to do is free up to about here. So we'll just keep going. Okay, and once you've freed that part, you can put it back into the worm ringers. And if you find that the worm ringer is drying up, you can pour a little bit more on. Okay, and now you're going to tie your second thread. Oops, let's just get this out of the way. So now you want to tie your second thread. So get another thread. And what you're going to do is take, oops, sorry, I covered the camera there. So pull your prep upwards, and you want to take your second thread and just lie it down below, get it wet so that it doesn't pop up. And then you want to lay your prep back over. And so now you do the same thing that you did before and you want to tie another double knot in the second thread. 
So again, tie it snugly, but not so tight that you cut through your prep. Okay, once that's done, you can just trim off the short end. Okay, so now you've got both ends tied and you just want to pull your prep out of the way. Take your hook, let's see where the second one. Okay, so here's your second end here and you wanna take your scissors and again, you wanna cut a fair distance from the second knot so that it doesn't come free later. Okay, and so here's your prep. It is ready to go into your dish. So now we'll just get the dish ready. And you can just put it, leave it in the ringer for now until you get your dish ready. To get your dish ready, you want to put three milliliters of worm ringer, solu worm ringer solution into the well of your dish. So now I'm going to bring over the prep and you want to tie this end of your prep as close as you can to this pin because you want your prep to sit in the deep end of the well. You don't want it sitting in the shallow end. So again, this can be a little bit fiddly, but it'll be, so we'll just cut off the extra string and you can use your forceps for this. Just pass the thread under. And you can hold the part that's tied to the to the prep with your forceps. Oops, let's bring that over here. Let's make it easier to see. So if you find it's a bit too far, you can try and shorten up the, the thread as well. So you just pull a little bit, but be gentle. Okay, so we've got our first knot. Now we're gonna tie our second knot. And we'll just pass it under. Grab it with the other pair of forceps. And so now you've got two knots. And you just use the forceps to hold the thread. Oops. Okay, so that seems, just do a little test, make sure it doesn't come loose. And then what you wanna do is take this loop and just push it down to the bottom so that it pulls your prep down into the worm ringer solution. And then if you want, you can trim off your thread. Okay, so now the next thing you wanna do is tie this part. So this end of the, the second thread that you tied, you wanna tie this to the force transducer. So take your dish and move it as close as you can to the force transducer. And be careful not to pull on your prep too much. And just take the thread and you wanna pass it through the hole that's in this part, that is in this part here of the force transducer. So take up the slack. And you wanna tie this as close as you can to the force transducer. You don't wanna have your dish too far back because you don't want there to be a lot of excess thread between your prep and the force transducer. Because if there's a lot of extra thread, it makes the thread a bit slack and it will, you won't get very good contraction recordings. So we'll tie our first knot. Again, do it as close as you can. That's one, and we'll tie a second one. You can use your tweezers. Pull it through, and then just hold this in place, and tie your knot. 
Okay, so now you can trim off the excess thread. And what you want to do now is you carefully bring your dish back so that you want to put your prep under a little bit of tension and give it something to contract against. And once you have it so that it's under tension, just press down on the, the blue putty to hold your dish in place. So your dish should be pretty secure and it shouldn't move. You want to make sure that your thread is not loose, that everything is fairly snug. Okay, and that's how you set up your prep for the neuromuscular uh, experiment. So now what you want to do is you want to collect some control contractions and you also want to keep your prep alive. And so to do that, what you want to do is you want to regularly bathe your prep in fresh worm ringer solution. So there's two ways you can do that. You can either use your large pipe, actually, you know what? Use your one mil pipetters. They're a bit more delicate and they're easier to handle. So you can take your pipette and just suck off the liquid and put it into your waste jar. If you want, you can take off a one mil at a time or you can just take it all out if you want to replace all of it. Just don't let your prep dry out in between. So once you do that, make sure you put in some fresh and make sure you put in three mils. The reason you want to keep bathing your prep in fresh worm ringer solution is because the muscles need oxygen to stay alive and we aerate the worm ringer to give it a supply, an oxygen supply. The other way you can also do to um, change out your worm ringer solution is you can use both pipettes at the same time and you can put one pipette at the bottom and you can take away while you add at the other end. This takes a little bit of practice to get used to, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And now you're ready for your experiment.